It's time for Tuesday Terror here on the Mutual Audio Network. Be sure to leave the lights on while you listen. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Celebrating our 10th anniversary, 63 Audio presents another fine audio drama. Do you dare go down into the cellar? Welcome to the Cellar, miniseries 3. Starring the Narada Radio Company and hosted by Cadavra Quivery. I'm over here. (laughs) Oh, sorry to have it so dark down here, but there's a candle shortage, and all of mine are just too... short. (laughs) So, I thought I'd just sit here by the pyre (laughs) and read some of my fan mail by the light of these beautiful flames. (laughs) Oh, Oh, yes, creeps. Your cadaver gets bags and body bags just crammed full of cards and letters. Would you like to hear one? Oh, all right. Let's see. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Dear cadaver, your voice is so hauntingly hideous. <laughs> Do you look as ghastly as you sound? I'd love to exchange photos with you, but these days I'm just too wrapped up to sit for portraits. <laughs> Much love. Toot in common. <laughs> oh, you see, even the big names are clamoring for cadaver. <laughs> Oh, well, Tootsie Poo, don't worry. Looks aren't everything. And beauty is only bandage deep. (laughs) Oh, oh, oh. And listen to this one. My dear Miss Quivery, I absolutely adore the Cellar series. But my listening time is limited to when my pet Raven is napping. Otherwise, he's constantly shrieking, Nevermore! <laughs> I hope you understand. With great admiration. Eddie Poe. Oh, Did you hear that, fiends? <laughs> Fan mail from the master of the macabre himself. Oh, oh I'm all a Twitter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, well, enough of that. A body can stand only so much adoration. Anyway... Now that you're here, boys and ghouls, why not stay to hear the latest serving of slaughter from my big book of eerie tales? <laughs> hmm. Ah, yes. <coughs> Our story tonight takes place in the 1970s, in the state of Virginia, and is set in the world of long haul truckers, those road warriors who carry goods to and fro across the highways and byways of the United States. So, now, let's meet Will and Sonny, who share the duties of driving an 18-wheeler for their daily bread. As our story begins, they're just pulling their rig into the parking lot of a roadside diner.
Oh no, Sonny, come on, here again? You got a better solution, Will? I only have 20 bucks on me until we can get this load of TVs to the warehouse in Richmond. After the last time we ate here, we had to fight each other to see who went to the toilet first. Look, Jasper's not that bad. He owes us a favor for getting his son a trucking job. He'll give us a meal and coffee. I'm going to ask for sandwiches to go. That should take us right to Tuesday when we get the load to the warehouse. Sonny, it's Friday. Just two sandwiches and coffee won't get us through three days. Well, damn it, it'll have to. I gotta get a room. I can't sack out in that smelly sleeper another night. Now, Cloris will let us have a room at the Big Ten for 20. I used to go with her. I know, I know. Please, I don't think I can bear to hear another tall tale from your love life. Tall tale, huh? Well, you can just eat out of a garbage can for all I care. Hey, there's Teddy Brown over there. With another redhead. Can't that guy be happy with what he has at home? <laughs> yeah, he already has two wives and eight kids. That's a crowded house. Unusual for you to be judgmental. Not judging. Just noticing my surroundings. Hey, the wives live together in the same house and they're happy. So Teddy says. I don't know. I just know I'm hungry. And I'm in dire need of some coffee. What can I get you? Uh, say, uh, is Jasper here? Jasper ain't the owner no more. What? What happened? He sold out. We got a new owner. Oh, boy. Shut up. Let me handle this. Sonny, nobody is going to give us a free meal. Hello, boys. You look hungry, am I right? This is the new owner. Doris, bring these gentlemen two steaks and fries. Sure thing. Burn them, hun, or bring them red. Doesn't matter. Any way you can fix them. Beer okay for you boys? Uh, yeah, uh, that's fine. Mister, we can't pay. No problem. This is on the house. Mind if I sit? Your place. You can sit anywhere you like. Why are you doing this? I like truckers. I'm the new guy here, and I'd like to build a relationship with my patrons. Mm, you do this for everyone? <laughs> Your partner is suspicious. One of many traits I have to put up with. We'll cool it. No, no, he should be. Trucking is like any other business. You have to look out for sharks and con men. You never know what people are up to. So what's your game? Will, the guy is offering us a free meal. At least say thank you. Thanks. Let me introduce myself. I'm Oswald Truman. Sonny McCabe, this here is Will Garner, my partner. We haul anything, anytime, all over the country. So I've heard. I also heard you boys lost a broker. Yeah, Dallas Henderson died. He was 82. His family had no idea how to run things. Business went to pot. We've tried to drum up business, but on your own, you just get taken. I need some work that pays. I got a payment due soon on that rig. So, lately none of the hauling jobs coming your way have been shall we say, good investments? Yeah, nothing's panned out. We took a load of watermelons from a farmer and they were all bad. No one would take them. We had to dump them in a field outside El Paso. I bet you want us to haul something for you? Yes, Mr. Garner, I certainly do. We won't do anything illegal. Will? Look, something don't feel right with this guy. Give him a chance, will you? He don't seem like a bad guy. Well, how do you, how do you, how do you know? We need work, sure. I I know it is as much as, I know it is as, as much as you do, but 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 I'm not going to jail for, for, for anyone. Who said anything about jail? No one. But I bet the cops do. <laughs> I like you fellas. You remind me of an old married couple. Things get that way when you're partnered up with someone for a while. <laughs> now, I assure you, Mr. Garner. There's nothing illegal about what I need to be hauled. Tell me one thing. Okay. What happened to Jasper? I bought him out, fair and square. He wanted to go back to Santa Fe and play with his grandchildren. Just like that? Just like that. Things move fast sometimes. Ah. Thank you, Doreen. Yes, sir, Mr. Truman. Sometimes things move too fast. 
You run all your business from this truck stop? I do now. You boys eat. Then meet me in my office. Why do you keep staring at us? Sonny, why is he staring at us that way? Well, just cool it. Sitting there staring at us like a, a what you call it, Cheshire cat? I think he's setting us up. <laughs> Sonny, your partner's the smart guy. More like a smart ass. I've had all I can take from you. You want to take it outside, hotshot? You bet your ass, old man. I'll show you who the old man is. Oh, sit down, both of you. <laughs> Enough. No more words from either of you. I'm hiring you both together. Take the job, Mr. Garner, or get out of my office. The same for you, Sonny. Hold on. I want the job. I'm sorry. If Mr. Garner does not want my helping hand, then you cannot accept the job. Both or neither of you. My terms or the highway. Well, Will, you got anything better to do? <sighs> All right. What's the damn job? <laughs> I'm glad you accept my offer. Will you give me your hand on it? I'm not shaking your hand. I'm only taking the job. <laughs> Very well. This is it? This is what you want us to haul? A little box? A... Uh, what is it? Five by twelve metal box? Say, mister, Will is right. That's kind of odd. What do you got in here? Cigars? Don't open it. <laughs> I just wanted to see what's inside. You didn't have to snatch it out of my hands. Don't open this box. Not ever. Both of you promise me. You will not open the box until you hand it over to the person at this address. Ralph Spare, Carmody, Arizona. Huh. Long ways for a box. He's an old friend of mine. You don't trust the post office? Just promise you won't open it. <sighs> yeah, all right. Okay, okay. We will not open your precious box. Uh, we got to drop off some TVs in Richmond first. How long do you want us to take to deliver this? As long as it takes to get to Arizona. Will you need a signature? No. I'll know if it gets delivered or not. Just deliver the box to the address I gave you, and you get $35,000. No questions asked. You've been staring at that thing for an hour. This job stinks. Yeah, so does going hungry. Just relax. Nothing bad can come from this. How do you know? Oh, why do I take this from you? The sulky will is bad enough, but the philosophical will is the pits. I'll take all responsibility on this, okay? If cops are involved... If cops are involved, our butts are cooked, buddy. Will, just go in the back and get some rest, huh? I'm gonna need you to drive in a few hours anyway. Yeah, I guess I am a little tired. I'll wake you in a few hours. W-E-S, classic country music for Ruidoso, New Mexico. This is Hard Hat Hannigan, and you got me for the next four hours, spending your favorites from the greats of the best music in America. And right now, let's enjoy a sweet tune from your grandpa's day, Lay Me Down a Pallet on Your Floor. What's this? An accident? Car flipped over. Looks bad. How come no cops are here? What the heck is going on? 
Will? Uh, accident. Cars rolled over, Sonny. Look, there's somebody over there in the ditch. It's a woman. Uh, I, I think she's moving. She's banged up pretty bad. Yeah, uh, get on the horn and get some help, Sonny. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, no. No. No cops. What? Lady, you're hurt bad. No. Oh. No cops. No, no doctors. She's out of it, Sonny. Just go call them. Oh, I'm okay. Just give me a ride. Hey, hey, you shouldn't move. You were in a real bad wreck. I'm fine. Just give me a ride, please. Oh, okay. Hey, Will? Yeah? That girl. She was all banged up, right? Cuts all over her face, body covered in blood. You saw that, right? Her brain was showing through her skull, too, Sonny. By my reckoning, she shouldn't be alive. Then how in the world did she just end up inside our rig? That's definitely a puzzler, bud. But here's an even bigger question. What happened to the wrecked car? <sighs> hey, the car! It's gone! Disappeared while we wasn't looking! Holy crap! I'm spooked! What the hell are we gonna do? <sighs> I guess we're gonna give the young lady a ride. Welcome to Arizona. Woo, we made it, Sonny. Carmody's about uh, 35 miles away. Almost done with this job, thank God. Yeah. Why are you so glum? Don't worry about it. Kathy, where are we taking you? Carmody. <laughs> where else? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I like that shirt. Yeah? <laughs> Reminds me what a gunfighter would wear in an old cowboy movie. <laughs> I got this shirt in Rochester, New York. Can you believe that? Oh, no. I thought maybe Oklahoma or Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but ask questions here. <sighs> Okay, shoot. Where are you from? Sonny. Oh, it's okay for you to be suspicious when it comes to Truman, but when a girl is involved, a girl, by the way, who can heal all of her own wounds and make her wrecked car disappear? I'm trying to tell you to just go with it. How can you act so damn calm, huh? <sighs> you guys go all over the place? Yeah. You ever been to Alaska? No, not yet. Been to Canada a lot, though. Beautiful country up there. <sighs> I had an aunt who lived out there. Hoarder. Boy, was she ever. I think it all started with the teacups they used to sell on TV. Remember that infomercial with Dick Clark? It was about the time he was starting to look old. After what? Four decades? Crazy. I'm pretty sure he sold his soul. Or maybe he was an android? Anyway, where was I? Uh, talking about an ant in Alaska? <laughs> oh, yeah. Started with teacups and moved on to cats, dogs. <laughs> you sure do talk a lot for somebody who was in a bad accident. Sonny! <laughs> She's been in the truck with us three hours and she hasn't shut her mouth once. But a person's got a right to talk. Besides, her company's better, better her, you, this, this, this. Discussing Waylon Jennings' life for the um, umpteenth time. What's wrong with Waylon? I guess to you, he just don't stand up against the lack of the rolling Beatles. What the hell is wrong with you? You can't even see past your own sheds and notice anything else in the world. Fellas? Fellas. What? There's a cop flagging you down. Oh, for crying out loud. 
stay in the vehicle and keep your hands on the wheel or dashboard. I sure wish you'd pay attention to the road. You're a magnet for the fuzz. Hey, lay off, huh? Uh, here's my license and registration, officer. This your truck? Say, officer, where's your partner? Don't worry about my partner. Keep your mouth shut and your hands where I can see them. Y yeah. Uh, say, uh, what did I do back there? Shut up. Oh, okay. I ask the questions, you answer them. Nothing else. Got it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Hey, you have no right to talk to a citizen like that. Keep your hands where they are. Hey, no need for the gun, buddy. Smart ass, huh? I'll have you know I practiced law back in Boston. Will you be quiet, huh? This guy ain't playing. We haven't done anything wrong for this pig to act. Will, shush, okay? Both of you, shut the hell up. <gasps> uh, officer? What's wrong with your, uh, um, eyes? Shut, shut your, your damn, damn mouth. mouth. Get, Get out, out of the truck, truck both, both of you. Now! Uh, I guess we better do like he says. Yeah. Where's Kathy? How the heck should I know? I didn't even see her get out of the truck. You two, shut up. Look, man, put the gun away. I said shut the hell up. You two have something my boss wants. Damn. I knew we shouldn't have got involved with that Truman guy. What? Where is it? Where's what, officer? That box, stupid. My boss wants it real bad. <laughs> well, you can't have it. What the? See, I'm good for something, huh? You... you just came out of nowhere. It set that cop on fire! <laughs> I bet you two are glad you brought me along. <laughs> Why are you two acting so scared? Look, it's just magic. I'm not a demon or anything. Kathy, watch out! Get her right off. <gasps> get her on. Uh, Zip get her off on me! So she uh, can't cast any me. spells. You got it. <laughs> What's the matter, boys? Uh, you look spooked. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't you be spooked if you saw a burning guy you thought was dead so, so, so suddenly split up into several versions of himself? Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, guy, your hand is still on fire. Huh. Thanks. Put him in the car. Where are you taking us? To see our boss. Who else? Look, if you had found the box, would you still be taking us to your boss? Or would you leave us alone? If we'd found the box, you'd be dead. And we wouldn't need to take you to our boss. Now shut the hell up and get in the car. I don't know what happened to the box. I put it in the glove compartment. I mailed it. You what? I took it to a post office when we stopped for a bite in Tennessee. Why would you do that? Our job was to take that box to Carmody by truck. Oh boy. What if the mailman loses it, huh? Yeah, why would you do that? I did it because if it was something illegal, the post office would find it. There wasn't nothing illegal. How do you know? Did you look? Well, <coughs> no. Did you look? No. Uh, uh, of course not. You shouldn't have mailed the box. I know. Sure isn't much here in Carmody. Looks like a ghost town. Man, this place 
kind of gives me the creeps. The people eating here, they give me the creeps. I know what you mean. Their skin is falling off their faces, and their eyes are burning, just like that cop's. He will see you now. Speak of the devil. Who, who will see us? Come on. Don't push. Hey, watch the hands. Hello. My name is Dance Nichols. Where's the box? Look, we don't know where the box is. A guy named Truman hires to bring it here and deliver it to a guy named Ralph Spare. My partner mailed the box. Sonny! Look, sometimes you have to tell the truth and maybe it won't get you... (sighs) killed. You're right, Will. We shouldn't have gotten mixed up with that Truman guy. Even I didn't know for sure, Sonny. (sighs) Of course you shouldn't have trusted Truman. He's quite the insufferable heretic. He cares only for himself and gives a thought to no one else. Getting burned by Truman doesn't just break one's heart. It corrodes one's soul. (sighs) I'll wager you two are wondering what is going to happen next. Will we all go out for ice cream? (laughs) Very droll. No. What happens next is... My men here rip you two apart and feast on your insides. (laughs) Hold on! Hold on! Wait! What happened to Kathy? Where is she, huh? I'm still here, Sonny. You see that, Sonny? Yeah. What's happening to her? I've seen it in the movies, but I never thought I'd see it in real life. I'll bet that's some kind of a force field holding her up there. (laughs) Oh, no, not for much longer, though. The patrons of my restaurant will feast on her. Let them go, Nichols. It's me you want. Oh, man, I tell you, you wouldn't believe the traffic out there. So many witches flying here and there. I'm surprised I didn't run into my wife. (laughs) Can you please use the front door, Mr. Spare? We've talked about this before. Coming in through the kitchen is... So uncouth. Uncouth counts in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. (laughs) Say, who's the hottie, huh? Sure making me sweat, you know what I mean? (laughs) Oh, hello up there. (laughs) Say, baby, you want to come over later to listen to some records? Maybe lick a lollipop? (laughs) Hey, I know you, I think. Nichols, you know who this is? (laughs) Anyway, looky here, Nichols. I got what you want. Yes! (laughs) Ha ha! Ah, you may be an uncouth fool, Spare, but you always give me results. Hey, you Ralph Spare? In the pasty flesh. (laughs) You work for him? Hey, I work for anybody that's got that green. Those golf course fees ain't gonna pay themselves, buddy. I don't get it. Why would Truman want us to deliver the box to this guy if he's going to give it to an enemy? Hey, they didn't used to be, buddy. Nichols and Truman, they used to play crochet together. (laughs) Mm. Mm. That's croquet! And shut up about him, Spare. 
I don't want to hear his name again. Hmm. Well, <laughs> let's have a little peek at what Uncle Ralph brought us, eh? What the hell is this? A rock? Hey, 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 not just any rock, booby. A chunk of a sculpture of St. Sebastian from a cathedral in Venice. <laughs> I believe that is his big toe. Whoa! Oh, oh Diana, that was a show. <laughs> I don't understand anything that's happened. Was he a demon or something? Were the cops demons too? Cops? No, of course not. They were all actually nickels. And he wasn't exactly a demon, you know. <laughs> he just practiced like the wrong magic. Nichols was a magician just like me and our cute little friend there. That toe was not in the box. Ho <laughs> ho you looked inside. I sort of peeked. All I saw was dust. Hey, that wasn't just any dust, buddy. <laughs> that was dust from someone who died in the name of a great cause, you know? In the wrong hands, it could mean eternal life with a hell of a lot of power. Oh, my head. Kathy, are you all right? Oh, that ain't Kathy, buddy. Look again. Oh, oh I, I feel, feel so, so weak. weak. Truman? The whole damn time you were her? Well, I couldn't resist tagging along to see how you fellas would make out. And I, I couldn't resist seeing Nichols' face when he got his, shall we say... Come up and <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? I'm sorry, Will. It's just, just, well, anytime we run across a female. Oh, stuff it. I can't help it if I get a little lonely on the road. <laughs> hey, Will, I'm a little worried now. <sighs> about what? Well, about you getting lonely. If I sack out in the sleeper, are you going to be able to keep your hands to yourself? Sonny, one day you're going to push me too far. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, freaks. <laughs> Wasn't that some story? It reminds me of a story a dear old friend once told me. You see, she loved to travel. So on a lark, she stowed away in a transport truck full of coffins. Hmm. <laughs> well, she was just so disappointed to learn that they were all empty. <laughs> oh, tonight's story, Creeps, was written especially for The Cellar by audio dramatist and author Mark Slade a great friend of the show, and of our director, Mr. Lutz. He calls our tale Gear Jammin' and says it was inspired by a 1970s TV show called Movin' On. Oh, but the supernatural bits were not a feature of the original program. <laughs> well... My lovely creatures, this is your ghostly ghost. <clears throat> oh, your ghostly host, Cadaver Quivery, saying farewell until next time. And remember, don't take candy from stranglers. <laughs> You have been listening to Gear Jammin, episode three of the Cellar's third miniseries. It was written by Mark Slade and was produced and directed by Pete Lutz. The theme was composed and performed by Tom Rory Parsons. Our cast consisted of the following players, Pete Lutz as Sonny, Dana Consolves as Will, Carol Crone as Kathy, 
Chuck Wilson as Truman, Mark Kalita as Nichols, Jason D. Johnson as the Six Cops, Teddy Giggy as Doreen, and John Bell as Ralph Spare. Cadavra Quivery is played by Angela Young. Incidental music was composed and performed by Dr. Ross Bernard. This is Trevor Ryan speaking. The Cellar is a 63 audio production, mixed and mastered in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us again next time when we bring you a strange tale of sorcery called The Renegotiation, right here in The Cellar. Yeah, 63 audio. This 